So enough for the recap. Let's talk about today. Um, very keen that I help you take the learnings from last week, which we've just touched on, and do something with them. Um, let's talk about how to better manage HVAC systems with all the awareness we now have in the context of the things you might do to improve them. Um, you might recall that, uh, that I put up last week this thing that I called the HVAC opportunity cycle. Let's step around that opportunity cycle and, um, and take what we learnt last week um, and look at each one of those in terms of what the opportunity is and, and perhaps a little bit of guidance and some tips and traps uh, in, in terms of how you might start to think about what needs to be done at those stages to get some, some improvement along the way. The first thing we'll, we'll look at is uh, installation and commissioning, in, in no particular order, but installation and commissioning. But first of all, I thought I'd just touch upon this little diagram here, just to give a bit of a sense of, of where the opportunity is in buildings um, from an energy pers efficiency perspective. And you might recall last week I made the point that um, there's nothing you can do in a building to improve energy efficiency that doesn't improve other things as well. So it's as good as any in terms of looking at an improvement. Where do you start? Um, tuning. Making what you've got the best it can be. That's the logical place to start. It's not that uh, easy in some ways, but it would be where you would start. If you had an old car, the first thing you do, would, you would tune it up. Then you would maintain it properly, and then when you had a bit of money, you'd actually do something to improve it. Um, and no different with buildings. Tuning um, should see around a half a star improvement if it's done properly. And we'll talk about these things in more detail later on. Some buildings I've seen one and a half stars. Uh, an exceptional building that I was involved in a couple of years ago in Sydney, we saw two and a half stars. It obviously relates to how bad the building is when you start and how dysfunctional things are. Maintenance. Often talk about maintenance being good for minus one and a half stars to at least half a star. Minus one and a half stars because if you don't maintain something properly, you will lose efficiency. It will go backwards. And on the other hand, if you're maintaining something properly and you're focusing on the things that waste energy as long, along with other things, you might actually improve things along the way as well. And obviously upgrades and retrofits, it's about investing in step change. So where you spend your money and you know, one, two, three stars, it's an investment as such. Just to put a little bit of context on, on what we're talking about today and where the opportunity and potential is in terms of energy efficiency. So come to the first part, uh, installation commissioning. In some ways, it's, it's, it's the more straight, straightforward one. This can happen any time in the cycle. There's some good principles around all that. And I might just unpick some of these issues for you. So what's to be had? At the end of the day, out of the installation and commissioning process, you want something that's going to be uh, able to give you correct, best in, uh, operation. So the, the thing is operating correctly and it's operating as well as it should be operating um, as it's intended. Obviously, one of the things that comes out of a proper installation commissioning process is all the documentation you need to either operate the plant, maintain the plant, or set yourself up for future change. Um, the other fairly uh, primary reason for ensuring something is installed and commissioned properly is you get what you paid for. And I'm sure we've all got stories about things that didn't quite go the way they should have gone um, in terms of installation and commissioning and, and somebody didn't do the job properly and what have you. But getting what you paid for is a pretty important driver if you know how to, uh, how to use it. Proper installation and proper commissioning is also a foundation for future improvement and future change. We pointed out before, buildings are dynamic environments. Um, you come back to do something, oh yeah, I think that was installed a couple of years ago, don't know who put it in, no, I haven't got any detail about the thing, gee, that's not what I expected it would be. All of a sudden you, you, you're two steps behind where you thought you'd be when you come to change things. Generally HVAC equipment, whether they be fan core units, whether they be uh, pumps and what have you, um, it's not plug and play. It's not like we're used to these days with, with uh, IT. Um, you can't generally just put stuff in. You have to do a bit of fiddling and adjustment to make it work properly. So what are the sorts of decisions that you can apply when you come to thinking about installation um, and replacement of, of plant? The first one is a relatively obvious one, but not that much thought about. Is it like for like? Typically that's the most, um, you know, made, made a comment a number of years ago which, which got people thinking that more air conditioning plant gets put in in Australia by maintenance contractors than by installation contractors in new buildings. Because every day we're putting replacement kit in and by and large 80, 90% of that is just relatively done like for like. Nobody thinks about the fact the technology's moved on, the fact the building usage has changed. Because to do that you've got to be planful and these things break down without warning, don't they? 
and so we've got to have something fixed. So there's a real um, go with in terms of the like for like discussion. You do have to be planful, you do have to be thinking about things, and that's not always easy to do in the in the dynamic environment that we live in in, in property and facilities management. When it goes in, pay attention, go and have a look, um, just as you would if you were getting something installed in your own house. It's not that complex. You get an eye for good workmanship, ask questions. Even simple things like, well, gee, we used to be able to get to the filters, now we can't. What's going on, guys? Some silly things really do get done in terms of access for maintenance. Safety is another thing as well. You might have had a bit of kit that was installed and you had safe access. The new bit of plant, because of change in technology, means it's not quite the same and you've got maintenance uh, safety access issues again. So pay attention, get involved, go and have a look. Get the records at the other end. Um, ask the question, what should I expect? What do I need? Get a feel for all these sorts of things. At the end of the day, there's also some structure around this. Like most things in our industry, we've got training, we've got accreditation, we've got certification. Probably the dominant player in that space uh, in the Western world is a thing called NEB, National Environmental Balancing Bureau. Um, there's a whole range of accreditations. Is the commissioning technician who's commissioning this NEB accredited? If they are, you'll get the documentation, you'll get the standard at the other end. Interestingly, NEB look at commissioning on three different levels. First level, has it been installed correctly? Second level, is the bit of plant working properly? Third level, is the bit of plant working in the system correctly? So there's a whole lot of system around commissioning. It's not just, let's just get it commissioned. There's a whole lot to go with if you know what to look for.